In this video, we are going to be learning about Newton's first law. So Newton's, all of his laws have to do with forces. Ask yourself this question. A marble is placed at the top of a smooth ramp. What happens to the marble? What force causes this? Obviously, the marble will go down the ramp. And what causes that actually is gravity. So the definition of a force is an action exerted on a body in order to change the body's state of motion. Um, more colloquially, it's thought of as a push or a pull. Now forces can be balanced or unbalanced. Balanced forces do not change motion. So a light on a ceiling, gravity is pulling it down, and then there's probably a bolt or something holding it up. The light does not fall down, its motion does not change, therefore balanced forces are acting on that light. So how about a car moving at a constant speed down the street? Well, in that case, balanced forces are also acting on the car, so constant speed is its state of motion. The, the force moving the car forward would be pressing on the gas pedal, and the car pushing, or the force pushing back against the car would be friction. Again, balanced forces. Unbalanced forces change the body state of motion. They can cause an object to start moving, stop moving, speed up, slow down, and or change direction. For some examples, twirling something around your head. So even if you're twirling it at a constant speed, it's still technically unbalanced forces. It's changing direction shooting hoops, so you're exerting forces to get the basketball to go in the hoop. Catching a basketball, in that case you are stopping something from moving. If you are pressing the gas on a car, you are causing it to speed up. And all these concepts have to do with Newton's first law, the law of inertia. And it states an object at rest remains at rest, and an object in motion continues in motion with constant velocity unless the object experiences an unbalanced force. Another way to say that is objects will keep doing what they're doing. So for example, a water bottle sitting on a table will just continue to sit on the table. And a hockey puck sliding across the ice will continue to slide across the ice. No, this is because ice is basically frictionless. If you slid a hockey puck across the street, it would slow down very quickly because friction is acting against it. In that case, if friction is acting against it, it is experiencing an unbalanced force. So as long as balanced forces are acting across the hockey puck, then it will continue to slide across the ice. Now, this is a little bit of a tricky concept because friction does exist in our world. There aren't that many frictionless places. So one example of a frictionless place is outer space. So let's say you're in a spaceship and you throw a ball out the window of a spaceship, which is probably a terrible idea. The ball will keep going forever and ever and ever unless it hits an asteroid or another planet or something like that. It'll keep going forever unless it experiences something that will put a force on it. Um, Newton's first law is often called the law of inertia. So inertia is the tendency of an object to resist being moved or if the object is moving to resist a change in speed or direction. Again, an object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion. Mass is a measure of inertia. The more mass something has, the more inertia it has. For example, a bowling ball Give me just a second. A bowling ball. Here we go. There's my lovely bowling ball has a lot more mass than a tennis ball. It is a lot harder to get 
a bowling ball to move than to get a tennis ball to move. It's because the bowling ball is much more massive. And if a bowling ball is already in motion, it'll take more force to get it to stop than to get the tennis ball to stop. Here are some questions about inertia. Number one, does the law of inertia pertain to moving objects, objects at rest, or both? How do you know this? This one's pretty easy. So the law of inertia pertains to both, and we know this based on the definition of inertia. The tendency of an object to resist being moved, so that would be at rest, or if the object is moving, so that would be the object in motion. Number two, if you were in a spaceship and fired a cannonball into frictionless space, how much force would have to be exerted on the ball to keep it moving once it has left the spaceship? Explain your answer. The answer to this question is no force. The reason for that is because as long as an object is already moving, it'll keep moving forever unless it experiences another force. So this is like the example I gave on the previous slide when you uh, threw a ball out the window of a spaceship. In this case, the cannonball will keep going forever. Okay, number three. If an elephant were chasing you, its enormous mass would be most threatening. But if you zigzagged, its mass would be to your advantage. Why? Well, an elephant has a lot more mass than you do. That means it's going to be a lot harder for the elephant to change directions. You, with your lower mass, can change directions really quickly, like this. But the elephant, because of its larger mass, will change directions more slowly. If you zigzag, you can avoid being hit by the elephant. Make sure that you do your summary for your Cornell notes.